You can see just a few people working in every station because mostly machines are the ones who are doing the job. And look at that. This is uh, like a robot going around the whole plant by itself. It knows where to go, it knows where to stop because you get to see all these part of cars going around you, like literally flying all around you. You can see those doors over me. How China automotive sector made the journey to where it is today? Well, all started in 1985. That year, China had produced just over 5,000 passenger vehicles, as its population had just breached the 1 billion barriers. If we look at the picture today, four decades on, the country can look back on the progressive development of an automotive manufacturing sector that is seen by the government as strategically important, and that is a key contributor to the national economy. As you guys might know by now, the speed of China's transformation is unmatched in history, going from one of the poorest countries to one of the world's largest economy in just a few years. China has been the fastest growing economy in the world since the 1980s, with an average annual growth rate of 10% since 1978. Such growth has enabled China, on average, to double its GDP every 8 years and helped raise an estimated of 800 million people out of poverty. The Chinese government has made innovation a top priority in its economic planning through a number of high-profile initiatives. One of the most ambitious plans to upgrade and modernize China's manufacturing in 10 key sectors in order to make China a major global player. But China's successful transformation has been also directly linked to the state-owned enterprises. They have played a significant role in China's economic growth and development. As of 2017, China has more state-owned enterprises than any other country. In 2018, half of the country's centrally-owned enterprises were among the world's 500 largest companies, and in 2019, they represented 4.5% of the global economy. In China, state-owned enterprises operate across various sectors of the economy. Airlines, telecommunications, energy, transportation, manufacturing, finance, and many others. When it comes to the automotive industry, there are several of these kind of huge corporations that are managed and controlled by the central government. While these automaker companies are not strictly classified as traditional SOEs, they are closely tied to the Chinese government and operate within the framework that involves state ownership, control and influence. Therefore, they play a crucial role in China's car industry and economy. There are four main automakers in China, referred as the Big Four. They are major automotive manufacturers and have a significant influence and market presence in the country's industry. These companies are Saic Motor Corporation Limited, Dongfang Motor Corporation, First Automobile Works Group Corporation or FAW, and Chang'an Automobile. These companies manage several brands under their portfolio and also have several joint ventures with other global automakers like Toyota, Hyundai, and General Motors. Well, it's not a secret that nowadays, China is the world's largest automotive market, with a vast consumer base and significant growth potential. But how did they get there? So the thing is, in China, since 1994, foreign companies involved in the car industry have been required to enter the Chinese market as 50-50 joint venture partners with a local company. This has been seen as a win-win relationship, since joint ventures often involve technology transfer agreements, allowing foreign automakers to share their advanced automotive technologies with their Chinese partners. In exchange, foreign companies may gain access to the Chinese partners' manufacturing capabilities, market insights, and distribution channels. Today, I am visiting a huge workshop that belongs to one of these state-owned enterprises, Saic Motor Corporation. It is one of the largest automotive manufacturers in China that was created in 1995 with headquarters in Shanghai. Saic Motor produces a wide range of vehicles, including passenger cars, commercial vehicles, and new energy vehicles. Some of its popular brands include Rowi and Maxxis, being this last one the sub-brand that we are visiting today. 
Hello everyone and we are here in the city of Nanjing visiting another cool place. This time we're coming to Saig Motors Workshop located here in uh, this city and we're checking the different processes that are take place here in this plant. Uh, as you can see behind me there is an almost fully automated uh, assembling line. Uh, it's a huge space, it's brand new, it just opened a few years ago and now it's producing different kind of models. Electric vehicles, gas vehicles and hybrid vehicles. Uh, as you can see, the three models we're going to check in a minute, right behind me, they're all being produced in this plant. Psych Motors is also the parent company for MG, the British-founded brand that was acquired by Psych Motors in 2007, year that production for this brand restarted in China. For many years, MG was not present in the UK market where it was born until the MG6 model was launched in June 2011. Psych Motors has also partnership with several international automotive companies, including joint ventures with General Motors and Volkswagen Group. These partnerships have helped them gain access to advanced automotive technology and expand its presence both domestically and internationally. We're checking one of the models that is being assembled here in uh, this uh, workshop. This is a Maxima, it looks like a minivan. You, have, you can see behind me there's a lot of big space. It is an EV. Remember, this workshop assembled different kind of cars. So you can see here, this is the Maxis. Uh, as you can tell, a lot of screens everywhere. There's also here on uh, this, uh, what it used to be a mirror, is also a screen. The car itself looks very nice, very uh, well built. Here you might have the space for uh, suitcase or extra passengers as needed. You can arrange the space to make uh, more room for maybe some suitcases or if you're going shopping or do grocery shopping, you can accommodate in this model. This is an automatic door, as you can tell. Elon Musk said one time, Chinese electric car makers will find significant success outside of China. And the numbers do not lie. In 2023, China achieved the position of having the world's largest automotive production sector, with a total output of 30 million vehicles, including global leadership in the manufacture of new energy vehicles, producing nearly 9 million units during the year, representing almost two in every three new energy vehicles produced globally. One of the things that got my attention the most is the level of automation that is being used in this kind of uh, workshops. You can see just a few people working in every station because mostly machines are the ones who are doing the job. So there is a huge assembling line from the very beginning to the very end that is transporting the different uh, parts of the vehicle to be assembled at some point. So I really like to see how technology is evolving. The use of machines and the use of these kind of technologies is to make the work safer and faster and at the end more efficient. We will produce a bigger amount of products in a safer way using less time and less people. In an effort to boost the auto sector, China introduced its law on joint venture, using Chinese and foreign investment in July 1979. This legislation was instrumental in attracting and integrating foreign technology and capital from more developed nations. Here we have another of the models of this brand, Maxis. This is called Unique and also is an electric vehicle. This has only two screens, one here in the front, one on the side, and all the buttons to uh, control the different functions of the car, including the volume, maybe make phone calls, just as a regular car or a regular modern car would do. This is more like an SUV, 
It looks also very spacious. Very comfortable to travel in. In the mid-1980s, China quickly attract both US and European automakers to invest in joint ventures in China. For example, in 1983, American Motors Corporation, or AMC, first signed a $51 US million joint venture agreement to produce their Jeep model vehicles in Beijing. In 1984, Germany's Volkswagen signed a 25-year contract worth of $66 million US dollars to build Santana sedans and engines in Shanghai. France Peugeot agreed to another passenger car project to make vehicles in Guangzhou. There are, of course, some processes that will require people to be involved. If you need to assemble small parts of the car, you will need people to do this job. And look at that. This is uh, like a robot going around the whole plant by itself. It will work with some uh, instructions. It knows where to go. It knows where to stop. Somebody just put, stay in the middle and the car just stopped because it detected a person. It has cameras and sensors that will know when somebody is nearby. So of course, this kind of device, even though it's going at a very low speed, is very safe. Since 2009, the Chinese government has heavily subsidized the new energy vehicle sector with support of a whopping 150 billion yuan by 2022, which has significantly accelerated the growth of China's new energy vehicles. Growth has been rapid and intense. By 2022, Global new energy vehicle sales soared to 10.8 million units, making a 61.6 year-on-year -year increase. In turn, China dominated this market, with its new energy vehicle sales reaching 6.8 million units, capturing an incredible 63.6% .6 of global share. For the traditional auto industry, the mantra is clear, those who master electric vehicles will master the future. This assembly line is not the same for every single vehicle. This is a plan or a workshop that will assemble products according to the request of each customer. So the color of the cars are different. They are not all the same. As you can see behind me, we have mostly white cars and that got my attention because here in China, people really like white cars, but that's not the case for everyone. Behind me, we have like a red car here and most of them, the rest of them are going to be white. So depending on the request of each customer, the color and the specifications of each car will be different. The concept of reverse joint venture is also reshaping the industry landscape. Foreign companies recognizing the technological progress of Chinese electric vehicle firms are increasingly looking to invest or form partnerships. Volkswagen's 5 billion yuan investment in Xpeng Motors and Stellantis' landmark deal with Leap Motor are a testament to this trend. The proactive involvement of Stellantis in these collaborations further emphasizes the urgency and intensity with which foreign brands are seeking collaborations in the Chinese EV space. It's really crazy because this place is massive, it's really huge. We've been already walking for a few minutes and we haven't reached the end yet. You get to see all these part of cars going around you, like literally flying all around you. You can see those doors over me are being transported to, from one place to the other by machine. There are no people involved in this process. There will be some people supervising this process through cameras. A very recent addition to the landscape is the tech player. Xiaomi has launched its first EV, with super acceleration faster than Tesla and Porsche. If you walk into a Huawei flagship store these days, you do not see only phones, but cars as well. The telecom giant launched its rival to Tesla's Model S in 2023. Although it remains to be seen how fast these companies can scale up production of EVs, they certainly have the deep pockets to persist for a while. Another of the tasks of these little robots in the middle is carry on the different components and the different parts of each car because every car is not the same. They have different kind of requests for different kind of customers. So in each car, they will need to place the different components of the car according to the request of the customers. So you can see here, uh, there is a line of these robots, one after the other, and each one of them is identified with a number. Each number is for each car. This is a high customizable car. Different colors, different components, different parts, different materials are being used 
to build a unique car according to the request of the customer. From 2015 to 2022, sales data shows that independent domestic new energy vehicle brands reach a significant advantage. They rapidly capture market share, with joint venture brands seeing a decline of 17%. Additionally, the demographic of automobile consumer is becoming younger. These younger consumers prioritize advanced features like assisted autonomous driving, comfort, and vehicle appearance over basic functionalities. Right behind me, you can see this is the last part of the whole assembling line. And after this point, the car needs to go through several tests. Every single car needs to be tested for safety and check the performance is the right one according to the brand standard. This is a brand that is trying a new uh, business model, trying to make a cars very customizable. So the final customer will have the chance to, through an online platform, double check the different colors, the different materials they want to use in their car. Currently, Chinese brands are seeking global expansion. Their strategies and responses to these challenges means a significant evolution for the industry. For instance, NIO, once primarily seen as an automaker, is building a whole ecosystem around its vision of a sustainable, joyful life for consumers, venturing into sectors ranging from mobile phones to charging stations and insurance. Their strategic partnership with the United Arab Emirates is securing an investment of more than 1 billion US dollars, highlighting their ambitious vision. Right behind me, you can see the audit area. This is the place where they're going to be double checking, making sure and inspecting every single detail of the final car has been made according to the request of the customer. So you need a area with enough light or a good lighting condition so you can check things like the color, the texture. If there is any little piece of dust inside, they will be able to detect it. So usually you have several people coming here. And of course, this is a process that needs to be made by people because machines perhaps haven't reached that level of precision perhaps when it comes to detect imperfections or small details of a final product. Maybe seven people double checking only one vehicle. There are about 30 different models that are being produced and assembled here in this workshop. Folks, I'm going to be wandering around nice and beautiful places here in China and documenting about it. I will also be Instagramming my day today and my trips in this awesome country. Feel free to follow me and leave your comments and impressions over there about life in China. I will leave the link to my account in the description down below. Remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss any of my follow-up stories about what's going on in this part of the world. If you think there might be someone else interested in these kind of videos, please consider sharing. My name is Rafael, thanks for watching, and stay safe until next time.